Doge is a mess, new Palo Alto Network Zero Day, a Golang supply chain attack, and an iPhone cable patch? I'm Allie Diamond, and this is ThreatWire. Only days after Elon Musk attempted to publicly, in writing, refute that the U.S. government does not use SQL at all, the Doge website was infiltrated not once, but twice by two different hackers. Two different web development experts who asked to remain anonymous because they were probing a federal website told 404 Media that Doge.gov is seemingly built on a Cloudflare Pages site that is not currently hosted on government servers. The database it is pulling from can be and has been written to by third parties and will show up on the live website. In its attempt to move fast, the team of coders working with Doge have been pretty sloppy with security. The entire Doge saga is truly a mess. Writing ThreatWire, I've personally avoided covering stories about the egregious security failures and discretions being carried out by Elon and the Doge group, but this one story has to make the cut. A new Palo Alto Networks Zero Day was discovered by the team at AssetNote. The Zero Day CVE 2025-0108 affects the PanOS software and allows bad actors to bypass authentication and invoke internal PHP scripts. The CVE does not allow for remote code execution though. Requests made to the PanOS system are processed through Nginx, Apache, and then the actual PHP application. Based on the configuration of the Apache servers used, attackers are able to take advantage of a URL being parsed multiple times to traverse and execute files in the system. Based on the number of file extensions embedded in the URL, an attacker can take advantage of the misconfigurations across the multi-part system and force an execution of files in PanOS. This bug affects various versions of PanOS, so we've linked to the full write-up by AssetNote as well as information of the versions in the description. Were hackers able to bypass Apple's cable protections? Apple alludes to this on the iOS 18.3.1 and iPadOS 18.3.1 updates. The thing is, the actual information about the bypass is vague. The official release states only the following. A physical attack may disable USB restricted mode on a locked device. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited in an extremely sophisticated attack against specific targeted individuals. For those who don't know, USB restricted mode is the feature that prevents USB data transfer on a locked iPad or iPhone, first introduced in 2018. And this was found by Bill Markzak of Citizen Labs. According to TechCrunch, Bill has stated that he is unable to comment on the record. Many of the supply chain attacks I cover here on ThreatWire revolve around Python or JavaScript, but finally, we have a supply chain attack in another language. A typo squat of the popular Bolt DB package was discovered by the team at Socket. The Go package, located at github.com slash boltdb go slash bolt, would enable remote code execution to be controlled by the attacker C2 server. The attack was executed by creating the malicious module, having it picked up by the Go module proxy service to have it cached, then modify the Git tags in the source repo to point to a non-malicious, legit version of the code. The success of this attack relied on the design of the Go module proxy service, which prioritizes caching for performance and availability. Once a module version is cached, it remains accessible through the Go module proxy, even if the original source is later modified. While this design benefits legitimate use cases, the threat actor exploited it to persistently distribute malicious code despite subsequent changes to the repository. A key tenet of Go is that modules are immutable once published by the Go module proxy service. This ensures repeatability, consistent builds, and prevents unversioned module updates. This is a huge security advantage because compromised libraries cannot quietly be updated. The malicious package has been removed by the Go module proxy, added to the Go vulnerability database, as well as removed from GitHub. So much for watching ThreatWire for the week of February 17th, 2025. If you want to support this ad-free show, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. We've started to cut the episodes into shorts and published them. We've heard your feedback, and this is a new thing for us, so thank you so much for understanding and working with us. 
Speaking of shorts, I've started publishing non-threat wire tech related content over on my personal Instagram. So if you want to find me there, you can find me at ending with Ali on everything, including Minecraft. As per usual, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught. Oh, don't get caught. <laughs>